Hello and welcome to Legal Cut Pro, the Canadian entertainment law podcast. My name is Greg Pang. And I'm Michelle Molyneux. Hi, Michelle. How are you doing? <laughs> good, thanks. How about you, Greg? Good, good, good. And of course, Michelle, you are in Vancouver, right? Yeah, and it's beautiful and sunny here today. Excellent. Yeah, and I'm back here in Edmonton. Today's podcast is our second episode in our exploration of music licensing. But, but first, first. <laughs> legal disclaimer time. <laughs> that's right. You want to go ahead and read the disclaimer, Michelle? Sure, that sounds good. This podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only. We are not providing you with legal advice, and nothing we say on this podcast should be construed as legal advice. If you require legal advice or counsel, please seek the services of a lawyer. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and this podcast is, of course, brought to you by Ampia, the Alberta Media Production Industries Association, and its professional development team. Thank you to Jane Too Good, our audio editor. And you can find Jane Too Good on her Instagram account at JJ underscore Too Good, T O O G O O D. Awesome. So, what's new with you, Greg? What's new with me? Well, it's uh, been. A week and a half of catch up since I got back from the Banff Media Festival. So uh, just a lot of catch up on my end. I uh, had a fantastic Father's Day this weekend, and uh, now it's just uh, now just back to the grind. And but otherwise, not not a whole lot else new. How about yourself, Michelle? Oh, I was on set last Friday, which was pretty exciting. Uh, I can't say the name of the show, but it's a very popular Netflix show, and I had an actor role, so it was a lot of fun. It was my first Vancouver booking. Okay, cool. Well, we look forward <laughs> to seeing that, so hopefully... Uh, It'll be great we, whenever it yeah, happens. Yeah, whenever we can find out that you can let us know what that the name of the episode is, or the episode the, the show is, mm -hmm. we'll be all watching for that show. <laughs> but right now, we have to talk a little bit cryptically about it, so... Yes, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right, what are we discussing today? Ah, all right, so today we are going to talk about issues that pop up in music licenses. We'll also be giving you a little bit of a recap of our, our previous episode because we talked in, uh, I guess, relative depth about the different types of rights in music licensing. Give you a little bit of a recap of that. And then at the end, we're going to append just a little bit about podcast music licensing Excellent. So uh, let's, uh, I guess to start off, we'll recap our first music licensing episode. In the end, broadly, we're talking about copyright it is that if you want to use music for your film and television production, you have to obtain permission from the copyright holders. The bulk of our episode concentrated on obtaining the rights to existing recordings of his existing music. That is, of course, not in the public domain. And for that, you need to obtain a synchronization license, synchronize the music in your movie in time relation to the movie and the pictures. And you also need a master use license. That is the specific right to record the master, that recording of that song. Now, if we go to something completely different, but of course related uh, in music, original compositions of and, and original recordings of original compositions of music for your film. And that's when we're talking about hiring a composer to write original music that will be recorded specifically for your film. And we touched on that as well. And that is separate. Those rights are, are related, of course, but they are not the same as obtaining a sync and master license, but you're obtaining those same kinds of rights to use that composer's music as a license or uh, as transferred from the composer in your film. And then finally, sometimes you may want to record a new version or a separate rendition of existing music, such as what we talked about last time in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, yeah. <laughs> where, they, where they sang uh, a few lines to I Want It That Way. I want to sing it so bad right now. <laughs> if, if we sing it, then <laughs> will we have to get our own license, Michelle? Maybe. I don't think we can afford it, Greg. <laughs> no, 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 no. Definitely not going to be able to uh, play, pay the Backstreet Boys to <laughs> <laughs> on this podcast uh or for us to sing their song on the podcast <laughs> okay so that's our recap next let's get into the issues that pop up with licensing music wait no <laughs> no no we, we oh yeah we missed something okay music yeah <laughs> okay right 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 and yeah, one thing we didn't talk about last time is the sources of music i think we talked a little bit about it but we mainly talked about one way or one source of music uh, do you want to start off with that michelle 
Yeah. So last episode, we more so talked about pre-existing music in the form of songs that you would seek out through a publisher, for example. And there are a lot of other different ways of going about getting music for your project. Yeah, Is that, that right, Greg? <laughs> yes, that, that's right. Yeah, you know, that, that's exactly what we talked about, at least to my recollection. And the individual songs are the ones we talked about where you have to individually negotiate with the different publishers and the rights holder of the master to use that song. And they're all, it's all free market negotiable. There's no set tariffs or anything like that. But there are other sources of music. And you want to talk about those other sources of music, Michelle? Yeah, definitely. So you can also use, I don't know if this would be the correct term, but I refer to it as stock music. I think so that's correct. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there are a lot of websites sort of similar to stock photos where you can go and it access a huge library of music and you're able to license those songs from the website. So some of those websites, for example, include Pond5, another is Audioblocks. I'm sure there are a ton out there with a lot of options of music. And from what we've seen before with working with these stock music companies, that you can either purchase the music a la carte or you purchase them uh, you become a member or something like that. And, and then you can license um, maybe up to a limit or maybe unlimited, depending on your, your membership level. Uh, a number of songs are whole, they're whole, anything from their entire library of songs. But then once your membership terminates, you can't use that music for future products, but maybe just the, the, only the current projects to which you synced and recorded those songs. So it's, it's kind of handy, uh, the stock music format, because instead of having to negotiate with each individual composer and publisher, you've just got this blanket kind of license to take what you want from the site. Exactly. Yeah. And that could, of course, save a lot of headache um, over trying to chase down rights holders all over the place. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can also hire a composer for your project, and that you're going to require a, a different set of agreements and um, licensing for use through the composer agreement. That's the originally written music for your film project. And we also have two sources that we didn't mention at all last time, but they are very, very important and should be mentioned. Is one is public domain, mm -hmm. and these are songs or compositions for which either copyright has expired or has been put in the public domain. So meaning that there is no copyright attached to them. So you can use those songs in your film. You have to be a little bit careful, though. Let's say, well, what about Tchaikovsky, whatever composition that I have the recording for? That guy's been dead for a long time, right? So, you know, it's a, then the copyright term for his song must have been expired. So I'm good with using that, right? Well, the song, yes, the, the composition, that copyright is likely in public domain, but the arrangement, the recording by whatever symphony, whatever orchestra, that might not be in the public domain. You know, if, mm -hmm. it, if the copyright term has not expired. So don't assume that just because Tchaikovsky has been dead for a long time and the copyright within those compositions is expired, that the recordings are in public domain. Mm -hmm. So that's public domain. There are a lot of sources of public domain, and we don't have time to discuss all of those today. We will have some time when we have an interview coming up in a little bit uh, with um, a, a music supervisor, which will be very, very good. Uh, and we'll discuss some public domain sources when we talk with her. There's also Creative Commons as another source. Creative Commons allows the layering as a concept that layers the rights rather than, you know, copyright, Michelle Molyneux, 2019, all rights reserved. Creative Commons allows, okay, so maybe it's a copyright Michelle Molyneux, some rights reserved, and then some form of Creative Commons license where you can use it. We grant you a license to freely use this, but not for commercial purpose. And there must be attribution. For example, this podcast I put under a Creative Commons license where we're, it's exactly that non-commercial use and must be attributed back to, to us, to Legal Cut Pro. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> yeah, so that's Creative Commons and there are sources for that as well. And uh, we, we don't have time to discuss that right now. But those are just some sources of music for which you can turn to legally <laughs> use music for your film production. And always use music legally. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Okay, next. Okay, now we're going to get to some issues with music licensing. 
Yeah, and these are things that will be definitely something to look out for when you're licensing music for your projects because if you don't look out for them, they might cause you headaches down the road. So we just thought we would flag a few of the bigger issues to kind of give everybody a little bit of assistance. Exactly, and what we'll do as well is that after we talk a little bit about this because, uh, of course, me and you uh, worked on a couple projects where these exact issues have popped up and we'll take an existing license, actually audio blocks, we just are looking at audio blocks uh, standard license and give examples of how these appear in a source like audio blocks. So one of the first issues that can pop up is assignability and transferability. So we would suggest that you should be careful in assuming that because you have licensed musical works, that you can automatically transfer or assign them to someone else. So say for example, maybe an individual working on your project has obtained a license for the music. Don't assume that that automatically means that the individual can transfer that license to the production company because there are some agreements that do have restrictions on the degree that licenses can be transferred or assigned. Yeah, I think we've seen this in most basic like kind of the lower tier level licenses with some of these stock licensing companies is that there are no assignments uh, and, and no sub licensing of uh, the, uh, the music. Um, another one to look out for is the name of the corporation that's entering the agreement. So you want to make sure that if you are getting a music license, that it is actually your production company that holds that license and not say, for example, a parent company, because that can be a very different situation. I think I've run into this situation and it's usually there's no maliciousness here. It's just for convenience, right? You have your production company because this is a Molyneux paying entertainment core production, but in fact, it's a five, five, six, seven Alberta LTD is, is the actual production company. But for convenience, maybe we just license it to, you know, Molyneux paying as the production company, but kind of overlooking that the actual rights holder has to be the production company. And if you license with this, say this stock music company, and if it, of course, as you mentioned, Michelle, the, you know, if you can't assign or transfer that or sub license it, then you could be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> but that would technically mean that then the production company doesn't have a license to the music. Would that be correct, Greg? That's exactly it. Yeah. And, and you have as the uh, the mother company, let's say, have no right to give that the, uh, that uh, production company the license. So you have to go back to the stock music company, the licensor, and enter a new license, essentially. Right. So make sure that the name of the corporation is the correct production company. Very important. Um, another one sort of in a similar vein is checking whether the type of license is to an individual or a corporation. Because a lot of, especially the stock music sites, will issue one to an individual that often maybe is a little bit better priced, which is very distinct and different from the type of license that they would offer to a production company. And of course, you want to make sure that it's the production company's name and that your production company actually holds the license to the music it's using. So, Greg, can we maybe take a peek at an example of um, a stock music license agreement? And that's what we mentioned earlier is about the audio blocks license agreement. And this is their standard license. And we'll post a link to their, th this license in the show notes, but this is uh, the title of this agreement is royalty free license agreement. And just as a, no, not a disclaimer, I guess a disclaimer. So we're not endorsing audio blocks or anything like that. This is just an example and something that's available online right now. So if you'd like to check it out, read it yourself, it's short. And that's the reason why we picked this is because it's, it's only two pages and it provides some, an illustration for what exactly what we're talk, we were just talking about. So, so again, this is the audio block standard license. Now they have two types of licenses. They have the standard and the enterprise license. And this goes to Michelle's point about making sure you have the proper license type. And, and uh, this one corresponds almost exactly to what you talked about, Michelle, you know, individual versus like a corporate license. And it, yeah, if you're a production company, you would probably want to go for the enterprise license, I guess, like they're one for companies as opposed yeah. to an individual. Exactly. And here it states that at the beginning of this license is that this standard license is written for and indemnifies you, the individual person who signed up for the account on one of our websites, not the entity or company you work for. 
So this is the trap you're talking about, Michelle, is that it's tempting to say that I, let's, I, Greg Pang, have a license. I've had this license with Audioblocks for a while, so I'm going to license this music and we're going to use it in, in this film production. But the film production is under a, a separate film production company. So right off the start, this would not work for the entity or company that I work for, as it states. It goes on further to state that for any stock files, like the stock, for example, stock music you obtain from us, you may incorporate them into any project, commercial or otherwise, including feature films, broadcasts, educational, print, multimedia, games, merchandise, and internet. So very, very broad license and permitted uses. However, I'm going to your other point about transferability is that if you go down to C, paragraph one under C, basic limitations, it states that you cannot sell, license, or redistribute our stock files, nor can you build your own stock media site with our files. And stating that you cannot sell, license, or redistribute is very, very important because as a standard license for individuals and not as it states explicitly here, not the entity or company you work for, I can't, as the individual licensee of the standard license, all of a sudden turn around and transfer it or sub-license it to my production company that I work for. So this is the wrong license for that. So be very, very careful in reading the fine print, not just picking this cheapest license because it says standard license, but you gotta read what is it for? Who is it licensing it to? Am I the subject or is my production company the proper licensee of this? And or can I transfer these licenses or sub-license it to my production company if the production company is not the, the eventual licensee? So that's very, very important there. It actually states here, <laughs> this is actually very, very interesting on the second page, uh, the last sentence of section C is that if any of these limitations are too stringent for your business needs, or you really like getting attorneys involved, <laughs> you can create a custom license structure that works for your business and budget. You can contact their enterprise team at et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They only post their standard license, but what they're saying is that if you need it for the enterprise license, you have to contact us for it. Or if you need something customized, this isn't good enough for you, then we can negotiate essentially, right? Mm -hmm. So the lesson being here is that you have to read these carefully and it might be also advisable to uh, involve your lawyer to make sure that uh, they review it and they advise you appropriately that this is the proper license for your contemplated use before you start using the music from uh, under the, uh, under these licenses. And I think I, that's it. Uh, oh yeah, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I have a question, Greg is I was mm -hmm. just wondering, um, it talks about that the license indemnifies either the individual or the company. And I was just wondering why do people need indemnity with license uh, agreements? Yeah, that's a very good point to bring up there. So under uh, what uh, you're, you're referring to is under B, our guarantee. Mm -hmm. And they say, they state here that we also put our money where our mouth is. In fact, we provide you with up to $20,000 in indemnification with our standard license and up to $1 million in indemnification with our enterprise license. So this is in the event that, for example, the composer who composed a particular piece that you pick out of the stock library let's say they took more than just influence or inspiration from another copyrighted work. Let's say they actually copied all the chords for some other existing piece of music uh, for which the copyright hasn't expired. And then a third party that maybe the rights holder sues them, uh, sues the company or stock music company, or, or maybe even worse, they sue you, the filmmaker, because now you have used that music for which the composer has taken the copyrighted pieces and incorporating into their composition. And now you're using music that has, is infringing on copyright. So their indemnification is their protection to that kind of lawsuit by a third party. Okay. So under the standard license, it's up to $20,000. Now that, that, that actually is not a whole lot <laughs> when you talk about litigation. <laughs> so okay. in their enterprise license, it's a million dollars. And this is very important that there is some, this kind of indemnification that they provide. Now I won't provide my opinion as to whether these are uh, appropriate amounts um, for film production, but having indemnification is very important uh, because you have that extra bit of protection uh, from the uh, stock music company. So I guess that would just be something in general, again, to look out for if you're getting stock music is make sure that there's some kind of indemnification clause. Exactly. Yeah. And this would be analogous to not analogous, but the same kind of protections you would get in a composer's agreements where the composer has to make certain representations and warranties that they 
the compositions that they are creating for this are wholly original with them and does not infringe on copyright, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, in the answer, sorry, roundabout way of saying yes. Perfect. Excellent. And I think we're done with this, so let's move on. Next off, I just want to talk a little bit about podcast music licensing. And why do we want to talk about podcast music licensing? We have been talking about music licensing in the context of film and television. It's because podcasting is extremely popular nowadays. Uh, some people call it the golden age of podcasting. Some people think that you may be able to just go get a, 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 a SOCAN license or something like that, and you'll, you'll be good to, uh, which actually doesn't work that way, but and then you'll be good to use that for your podcast. Well, that's not the case. What, what There is no single... Uh, like a like a collective society that doles out licenses for for podcasts so much like in negotiating or using music for your uh, film project you have to individually negotiate the with the rights holders to use the music in your podcast and a couple of traps to look out for is that unlike when you say you have a feature film and you're negotiating the, and then you're getting the license, the sync and master use license to use that music with your feature film. That's one work that you're using it with. With a podcast, especially with, let's say, using music for our podcast, your, your song, for instance, is that if we get a single use license to use once, and that's only a license, a permission, a consent to use it once in one episode. But if you want to use that music over multiple episodes, like with multiple episodes in a let's say a television series you have to make sure that your license grants you that right to use it in all those other episodes and not just in one work so that is just something to look out for i won't talk about it in too much detail right now but uh maybe in a future episode we might talk more about podcast music licensing michelle yeah i think that'd be fun maybe we can talk about it in the context of our music license yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, and, and this is, it is very interesting because I know that with some of the podcasts that I listen to, just independent podcasts, very good podcasts that I've noticed that they are using, but very short amount, but some popular music, some very, very popular music as a regular part of their podcast. Uh Oh yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering, and I don't know what, what my, they're not a client of mine. Um, I'm wondering if what my, I don't think, I don't have a, a legal obligation to go inform them of it, but man, oh man, um, it's, or maybe I should, but I don't want to look like some kind of ambulance chaser or something like that where say, hey, you know what? Uh, I noticed that music that you use for every single episode of your podcast and it's a very popular song. Ooh. Get that license for it. I'm quite concerned for your podcast because I actually like your podcast. Oh, so. <laughs> you got to yeah. save it so you can keep listening to it. Yeah, yeah. So, but I, I don't want to, yeah, again, seem like that that ambulance chaser trying to solicit work or something like that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's just a little bit about uh, podcast uh, licensing there. One last thing I want to bring up was there's a bit of a myth. I'm not sure if you've heard of it, Michelle, and I've had the question posed to me. And this person was not a client, so I couldn't give them a very direct answer. Is that, isn't it okay if I just use 30 seconds of, of a song? Isn't that fair use, you know, in, in air quotes? Yeah. What if I just use 30 seconds of a song and play it on my podcast? Well, no. <laughs> I think, yeah, the short, short answer is no. That is, is largely a myth. Uh, all the copyrights the laws in respect of copyright apply no matter how much of the song you're using. Now, could you try to rely on uh, defense of fair use or fair dealing here in Canada? Maybe that takes an entire conversation in itself, but there is no blanket. Yeah. You can use 30 seconds mm -hmm. of a song in your podcast or in your film production for that matter. Uh, because uh, just because it's only 30 seconds. So I would not, I would not rely on that. That would actually be sort of crazy if you could use 30 seconds, because mm -hmm. especially for film clips, but usually you only want, you know, maybe 20, 30 seconds of a song. So then basically all film and media projects could just use any music they wanted without licensing, if that were the case, that you could use 30 seconds. Exactly. No, and, and that's exactly it. Uh, and that's completely contrary to how our copyright laws stand as is. Now, should it be this way? I mean... 
maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. I was, yeah, it would be great for filmmakers if it was, but yeah. not so good for composers and songwriters. But I'd like to turn that around, though. It, it, it's great. It would be great for filmmakers if they could just freely sample, you know, mm-hmm. for their their commercial project for which they would may make money for or mm-hmm. with freely sampling on a copyrighted material and not obtaining licenses. But how would the filmmaker feel if some other filmmaker were to freely sample from their original work into their commercial work, make ah, money? Ah, interesting. You know, without without any attribution or or, or compensation to to the the filmmaker. Mm-hmm. Maybe some of them may be. Yeah, that that's how it, that's how it should be. You know, that's how uh, being an artist should be. Mm-hmm. But as we mentioned in the last podcast, we don't want to really dive into the policy around copyright law. But that's just a little bit of food for thought, I suppose. Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> should we give a shout out to Dr. Octavo on this episode, or or save it for for another one? We should. Yeah, let's give the shout out. <laughs> okay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> we gave the shout out for the last one too, right? We did, but I didn't really talk about what Dr. Octavo does and sort of... Oh, yeah, right, right. We just, we just merely mentioned that it was cur- your, the song is courtesy of Dr. Octavo, right? Yes, okay, yeah, yeah. No, Michelle, you want to explain why are we give, giving a shout out to Dr. Octavo? Yes, yes. So Thomas Brayback, a.k.a. Dr. Octavo, and I worked on a song called Just Say Go. Oh, gosh seven, eight years ago? It was a while back. But this is the song that we're now using for our intro and outro for the podcast. So I just wanted to kind of give a shout out to Thomas for his creative genius that we all get to listen to on the podcast now. Dr. Octavo, he does everything. He's a music producer, engineer, mixer, remixer, arranger, and composer. Uh, Thomas has licensed his music to some projects including Beverly Hills Chihuahua 2, Access Hollywood and Caitlin's Way. Beverly Hills Chihuahua too. Yes, and I'm particularly <laughs> excited about that because I Chihuahuas are one of my favorite dog, and um, okay. <laughs> um, I actually for anybody who follows me on Instagram, I've been tracking how many Chihuahuas I see a day in Vancouver because <laughs> there are dogs everywhere here, and then I get extra excited when I see the Chihuahuas. So. That's awesome. I'm I'm really stoked that uh, Dr. Octavo licensed music to Beverly Hills Chihuahua too. <laughs> but uh, for anybody who's looking for, if you need a composer on a music project, if you're looking for some pre-existing songs, uh, we'll put a link for Thomas's website in our show notes. Um, and you can reach out to him and he does fantastic work, all kinds of different genres, whatever you need. So he's amazing. That's the shout out. All right, so let's wrap this up then. Yeah. Uh, where can people find you, Michelle? People can find me on Instagram at Michelle Molyneux. And you can also reach out to me at Michelle, or sorry, no at, Michelle at LegalCutPro.com. And you can find me um, by email, Greg at LegalCutPro.com, and on Twitter at Cyclaw, C Y C L A W. You can also find us on our Instagram account, uh, and that's just at Legal Cut Pro. We should probably post more stuff on there or something. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll be working on that. Um, and anything else? Oh, um, I think that's all I've got for today. I guess uh, just for everyone, if you have any questions either about the music licensing that we've been talking about, or just anything entertainment law in general that you'd like us to address on a future episode, please definitely reach out. All right. So we will catch you again next time and continue on our, I think we have one more episode, maybe one or two episodes on music licensing left. Thank you for listening. You are my fire, the one desire. Okay, I think that's all we can do, Greg. Fair dealing? I think so, yeah. We talked about it, so criticism and comment. Besides, I can't sing worth shit. (laughs) 